Hello, Brick Sculptors, and welcome back to Brick Sculpt. This is Chris, and today we're going to talk about Pythagorean Theorem and Pythagorean Triples. Now, if you've been watching my content for a very long time, you'll know that I've done a video on this in the past, but it was quite a while ago. I had less than a thousand subscribers then, so I'm guessing most of you haven't seen it, and it did pretty well, and I think the concepts are really important for people looking to build Lego. So, I want to remake that video. If you want to watch the original video, I'll have it posted at the end. But this video is going to have some corrections and it's going to be a little bit better than the other one. So this video came about because I was trying to figure out how I could connect a plate at angles on a base plate. And I used to just put a stud down and kind of use it as a protractor and find a place that kind of fit. And I figured there had to be a more mathematical approach to it. Uh, typically in Lego we build at right angles. Everything on the grid is right angles. You've got basically two axes, and you're trying to cut that angle to put a plate at an angle. So I looked up kind of how I would approach finding the mathematical answers to this, and the answer I got was Pythagorean triples. Now Pythagorean triples are basically defined as right triangles that have all whole number sides, and Lego typically deals in all whole numbers, so I figured that would be the simplest way to do this. Now the most common Pythagorean triple is a 3-4-5 triangle. So I did what you guys probably would have done. I grabbed a 4 and a 2. That makes a 3 and a 4. Put some studs on here. Grabbed a 5 long plate. Tried to stick it down. And it didn't fit. So I started scratching my head. Okay, what the heck? Math is supposed to be correct all the time. That's the beauty of math. Why doesn't my math work here? Well, this is a classic example of what in math they call the fence post problem. Now the fence post problem comes from the idea of, let's say you're hanging a fence, and your fence has five sections, and each section has a post in between. So you're counting these sections as five. One, two, three, four, five. But when you go to put your posts in, you're actually going to come up with six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because these are the points at which you start counting, and these are the segments of fence. This also makes sense if you think of when you start counting, you don't start counting at one. You really start counting at zero, even though nobody actually says zero. So one, two, three, four four, five. And that's exactly the problem I have here. I should have laid it out like this. This way, this is five long in Lego talk. This is four long in Lego talk, but we're connecting on the studs. That means those are our fence posts. So really this is one, two, three, four fence sections and one, two, three fence sections. And then if we put our studs on there, we take our five long, which in Lego talk is really a six long, and it fits perfectly. Now on my channel, I often do videos about pieces Lego needs to make. And one of the most common things I hear from people is slopes with studs. So Lego has all kinds of different slopes out there, different degrees, different sizes, different angles, and None of them have studs on their faces, except for one. This is a little less common piece. This is Lego part number 6044. And 6044 is a retired piece that came out in 1992 and was retired in 1997. It's only available, I believe, in three colors. Black, yellow, and white. You might be asking, why am I mentioning this part? And what do studs on the face have anything to do with Pythagorean triples? Well, I would argue the reason none of these pieces come with studs on the slope is that it doesn't fit in the grid. This piece is unique in that it does. We can fill in the bottom with a one by one brick, and this is a Pythagorean triple. Let me show you. The bottom is a three. The slope is a 5, and the back side is a 4, making a perfect Pythagorean triple. 
Now I know what you're saying. Wait a minute. What about the fence post problem? That's a three, a four, and a five, not a four, a five, and a six like I did over here. And that's correct. You have to look at how they're connecting. These are meeting at the corners, meaning your fence posts on this are on either side of the stud. So the studs become your fence sections and the edges become your fence posts. When we're building in this style, the studs are our fence posts. So this is a Pythagorean triple, which allows the slope to fit perfectly into the grid. Why they discontinued this piece, I have no idea, because this is a super handy piece, and I would love to see more of these out there. A similar piece Lego did is this piece here. Not a very common piece either, but it also has a studded sloped side, and it's four studs long, where this one's five studs long. And you might say, well, how's that going to work? You can't do a three, four, five triple on this. And you're correct. This is four. This here stands at three bricks tall, or nine plates, which does not equal a whole number in plates. So how did they do this? Well, they cheated. Look at this little slope right here. This is not going to come flush to a plate overlapping it. So it really isn't a Pythagorean triple, but they found a way to adapt it to build what they needed to out of it. Now, if we take this logic here, we can expand this. There are more Pythagorean triples than just the 3, 4, 5. And also, you can take your 3, 4, 5 and you can double it, triple it, quadruple it, and you can make infinite of these in different lengths if you just keep multiplying them. So let me show you. So here we have our 3, 4, 5 triangle, just like I did on the previous plate. If we double all the sides, we can make a 6, 8, 10. Also, keep in mind, each side is one stud longer in Lego talk than it is in fence post talk. 9, 12, 15. 12, 16, 20. And then you could go on, 15, 20, 25, which I really like because you have nice round sides. They're all divisible by 5. I didn't have space to build it on here, but if you go too big, it's probably no longer going to be practical for Lego building unless you're building something absolutely massive. It's also worth noting, every time you multiply these, you have places you can put studs in the middle. So basically where you meet and start your new triple, you can put a stud there and have a solid connection. So all of these are going to have studs in the middle here to support it. So if you're making a large wall or structure, you don't just have to support it on the ends when you're building like this. You can have more and more spots in the middle to attach to as the triple gets bigger and bigger. On a three, four, five triangle and all of its brothers and sisters here, they have a 90 degree angle, a 36.87 degree angle, and a 53.13 degree angle. Now let's go to a different angle. This Pythagorean triple is a 5, 12, 13. You can also double that and do a 10, 24, 26, a 15, 36, 39, and again, they go on forever. Unfortunately, you're not going to have a lot of middle supports in this because the original triple is so long. You could put tile under this if you just needed more support, but attachment pieces are going to be tricky. But that's a much different angle. On this one, you have 90 degrees, 22.6 degrees, and 67.4 degrees down here. Other triples you could do that still maintain a smaller size and are useful for Lego building would be an 8, 15, 17, where your angles would be 90, 61.9, and 28.1, a 7, 24, 25, which would be 90, 16.26 and 73.74 and I know what you're probably asking is how do I get the most useful one the one that everyone wants which would be 90 45 45 well unfortunately there are no Pythagorean triples that are 90 45 45 but I have a couple solutions that I think will help and work pretty good this triple here is a 20-21-29. It's pretty big, but this could still be used in many mocks. And this is not 
a 90, 45, 45, but it's pretty close because these two lengths are only one difference in length, 20 and 21, which means our angles come out to 90, 43.6, and 46.4. So generally, this is pretty close to a 90, 45, 45, and might work in that application if you wanted to pass it off as such. Now if we turn to these ones over here, if you're willing to bend the rules a little bit, there are a few triples that will work with Lego, even though these are technically going to be illegal because the math is not correct. So you are stressing the pieces a little bit, but I will tell you these fit really nicely. So even though they may be illegal, they may not, I don't know if they fit in the tolerances of Lego or not, that's up to you guys to decide, but they do work well. And trust me, they don't stress the pieces a lot. This one here is a 12, 12, 18 in Lego speak. If you're doing it like I did all these, this would be a 13, 13, 19. But I think in Lego speak, it makes more sense, 12, 12, 18. And though this is not a perfect triple, you can see this attaches very easily. Now you might be saying, wait a minute, if it's a 12, 12, 18, how come you have an attachment point in the middle? And that's part of the beauty of this. This isn't an odd number, so how do you have attachment in the middle? Well, it fits on the jumper spot. It fits right in the middle here. So while these are going into the anti-studs, this one is going on the bottom tube there, and they fit just beautifully. I mean, this doesn't bend the base plate or anything. So I would use this technique in city building or mock building. Um, I don't know if you would, but I don't think this is illegal enough to matter. A couple other ones here that work. This is a 13 long plate, and I can make it fit as well, but it fits a little differently. 13 long, if you put a stud and then go perfectly 45 degree angles, the other stud will fit right in the middle of these four in the jump position. If you don't want to sit in the middle of four studs, you could put a two by two jumper here and connect it that way, but that does work at a perfect 45 degree angle. Now you have to be careful because it's not gonna be symmetrical how it lines up on the side, so it may or may not work in your build, but that is another way to achieve a 45 degree angle in building with 13 length. Now this 10 long also sits at a 45 degree angle, but I also had to cheat a little bit with it. This stud fits perfectly, and this stud is also on a stud, but again, we're using the bottom tube here, not the anti-stud. So 10 length, you can also fit really nicely, but it's not going to be symmetrical how it lines up with the grid on both sides. So as long as those things aren't restrictions, these two methods work great. This one will be symmetrical on both sides how it fits in the grid, but you could argue that these are all illegal techniques. Nonetheless, I think they're handy and I think they will work just fine in mocks. Well, I hope you guys found this useful. Like I said, if you want to watch the original video, I'll have it posted at the end here. If you have any questions, comments, or anything to add to this, please let me know below. I love to hear you guys' feedback. That's how I learn from these videos, and that's my favorite part of making these videos. As always, thanks for watching. If you guys like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. We do more just like this in the future, and we will see you next time.